Welcome to the next edition of the Rare Business Podcast. Today with me I have Rob Brown of Aviva. Hi Rob. Hi Adrian. So Rob, thank you for sparing a little time uh, out of your busy schedule to talk to us. First of all, tell us a bit about you and about the work that you do at Aviva. Well, a bit about me. Um, I'm, a, I'm an accountant by, by profession, been at Aviva for uh, 22 years, um, but lots of the last Six or seven years spent a lot of time helping improve our customer service and and even more latterly been using a method called uh, systems thinking to help with that to such an extent now that's become my role. So my role now is um, system thinking director for Aviva. Fantastic. Now we we did meet at a systems thinking event where you explained how by using systems thinking and those that, that sort of approach you were able to improve customer sat the quality of service delivered, reduce cost complexity and improve employee morale. I mean, it just sounded, it sounded like a, a wonderful story. Can you tell us a little bit about how you did, how you did that and, and what, what did you have to do and what sort of results that you achieved? Because I think it's fascinating and I haven't really heard of very many people using this type of approach in this type of domain before. Well, we, we, we started using systems thinking in 2008. The problem we had to solve was that we were continuing to try and be more efficient in what we did, but actually we were finding that our service was, was getting worse, so we needed to try something different. Mm-hmm. So out of, out of necessity and all that, we came across a company called Vanguard, uh, who um, all they do is advocate um, the Vanguard method of systems thinking, and um, I worked with them and some senior managers in my team to learn what that meant and how we could start applying that in our pensions operation. And you're right, um, by focusing on what matters to customers uh, and removing work that, that isn't of value to customers, we actually found that the customers were getting a much better deal at the same time as us, being more efficient in what we do. And, and because the, the way that the method works is to put that method in the hands of frontline staff, people who are talking to customers on the phones and dealing with their emails, um, by giving them the, the method by which they can improve service, then we did find that um, employee morale improved as well. And from the pensions area, we, we then looked at applying the same method right across our customer operations and beyond. So the question I was going to ask was also about, you mentioned when you spoke about some of the business results you've achieved around improvement of customer satisfaction and Reducing overall kind of cost you know, savings to the business. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about the um, some of the things that you've done and, and some of the business results you, that you've achieved? Yes, well, well, most of our work starts um, at the point at which customers either call us or get in touch with with our business, um, and the methodology is in the hands of our frontline teams and their leaders to look at what customers are precisely asking for, and in a service organisation with we've learned that customers want to be serviced in their own unique way. Sure. And um, if, if you apply a standard process to what customers are asking for and try and improve standard processes with an internal view, you find that, we've found that customers call back or they ring again because they're not happy or they ring because we've, we've not done a, exactly what they asked for. So if we can respond to that and build that capability, then customers don't phone back, they don't complain. We've, we've moved lots of things that used to do in the back office onto the phone because it gives you the best chance of responding to customers in the way that they want. And of course, then if you do that, then you can save money because uh, we're not resourcing for repeat calls and for follow-up calls and for complaints and for work being passed around. So in areas where we've done that, uh, our customer satisfaction on average is around 80 to 90%. Wow. Which, which is a significant increase from where we started. We've got employee morale, uh, the employee engagement around 70%, where, where before on average it was below 50 And And in these areas, albeit we're still learning because it's, a, it's an evolutionary way of improving service, we've saved tens of millions around our business already. That's fantastic. I mean, it seems to me that it's, you know, you talked about taking an internal view as you know and and empowering front life frontline staff it seems to me that the essence of this is almost getting out of our own way and, and not believing that our own process processes are right and doing what's right for the customer 
I think that's right. Um, I mean, with, I mean, historical, historically, we thought that giving customers everything that they asked for in the way that they wanted is is is, is expensive. So the the, can, the counterintuitive truth is that if you do deliver what customers are asking for, then um, it enables you to to review what it is you're doing and remove what's not of value. Because at the end of the day, we're here to help customers buy the right products and service what they want. So yes. um, working backwards from there and from what a customer would be paying for, then we can look at what's of value and what isn't. I guess you would probably advocate that all service organisations should be using this type of approach to figure out how they're organised and structured and how they deliver service. But it seems to be a bit of a radical um, radical departure from what, how, we're, how we're traditionally organised. Is that right? I think that's right. It's, it's, a, it's a radically different way of thinking about um, how you run your business. And many organisations have, have been founded on the same um, basic economics of the way that they do things. Uh, what, what, what this method does is, is challenge that. And by actually looking at business differently through a customer's eyes, you can actually see where uh, you can design things of real value to customers and focus on that and be much more efficient in that design. And then ruthless will look at areas where uh, customers wouldn't pay for that type of service or cost and look at how you remove it. And at the end of the day, that you're focusing on things that are of value to customers delivering that. And it allows you to look in it in a different light at, at, at things that aren't on that value curve from a, from a customer point of view. Sure. But because this is such a, I feel like a, a radical, it means it, it, it makes complete sense and from a, almost a very common sense perspective, so like looking at it from a customer, uh, customer's point of view, but because it's such a radical departure from where, where many firms are traditionally organized, particularly large service organizations, I mean, you must have faced some challenges around yeah. getting this adopted or at least tried out uh, in many respects. Yes, I think, I think the, 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 the brave bit is at the start where you're trying to find out for yourselves whether this is a, a method that works for you and works for your organisation. So um, we did have to make sure we spent enough time really testing this and throwing ourselves at it to learn. What the method does do, though, is as you are applying this approach in, in different areas of the business, there's a, there's, a, there's a part of the way that you make the change that allows you to, to capture data to prove, one, that it is a more efficient way of working, secondly, what customers think about it, thirdly, what employees think about it. So no decisions are made without having the data that tells you that it's a better method. Right. Once you've got to that point, it, it, it sort of takes the risk out of it. And, and what you learn is um, that you need to get leaders and teams getting to that point before you make any of those changes. Um, the, di the difficulty is because it is a different approach and it is radically different and you need to find a way of getting leaders and other parts of the business to see it for themselves rather than me telling them about it. Is that, the, is that a key part of it, is getting senior leadership engaged in the whole idea of trying to do something different? Yeah, yes. Well, I mean, in, in our organisation is no different to any, anyone else. We've sure. got leaders who have got to where they are based on their tried and trusted methods that they've learned and applied in their careers. The frontline teams using this method, it's, it's, um, it's a no-brainer for them because they tend to know what the problems are and what you're giving them is a method by which they can correct that. that that's what drives the improvement in, in engagement. But, sure. but leaders have to see and believe to themselves that um, this is a better way than um, the methods that they've currently and historically have in place. Once they see the data and once they understand how that works, then you um, then can move on to the next stage and start making those improvements. So... Um, it, that, that, that difference of approach and difference in thinking, there's no substitute for the leaders seeing, seeing it for themselves so that they fundamentally believe it's a better way forward. I mean, and so let me um, ask, because I think that's really, really interesting, because it's, it's about trying to generate momentum in a way and to drive you know, continuous change. And is it that you have, to, you have to almost go and get, did you have to almost go and get permission to run a pilot to try and to, to, to prove the case or did you have to intellectually prove it first, or was it a combination of the two? Well, we got we got permission to to run a pilot, and I volunteered to run that in what was my my own area at the time. Right. So, but but the the, the method itself, so in built in the way that you actually make change in any area, there is a pilot stage. So when you do introduce a new way of working, whether it's in 
operations, whether it's in sales, whether it's in IT, whether it's any part of the business, the methodology itself has a pilot stage where you can see using data that um, the design that you're um, putting forward is a better way of doing things. Right. That's fantastic. Rob, I think that, I mean, I, I just think some of the, th the story that you told and that, that some of the improvements that you, that you made, I just thought was, it was music to my ears and I applaud you for the, for the efforts that, you, that you've put in and I, and I hope many organizations who listen to this, this podcast interview will take up the, um, you know, the mantle because I think it's, it has benefits for everybody all around, I think. We just have to get out of, that, get out of our, our own way of thinking, I guess. Well, I mean, all I would say is give the, give the method a chance, have a look at it for yourself. And I mean, certainly what I've found, it's fundamentally changed my outlook over the last uh, five or six years compared with anything that I've done before. But uh, yeah, I just strongly encourage people to find out for themselves. Fantastic. Now, Rob, in the interest, I know they're a bit short of time. So the one question I always finish these interviews on is, is there anything that you would like to shamelessly plug? I'll just shamelessly plug what we've done in our business to really turn things around based on um, everything that our customers are asking for. Um, so shamelessly plug that we think we're, we're doing a great job, but we've got so much more that we can do. So um, so watch this space. That's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what I'll, I'll do is I'll make sure I get all this all linked up in, in the um, in the post and everything and give a, give a, a Viva a shout-out and a big shout-out to Vanguard, the Vanguard Method and Systems Thinking overall. And uh, thank you so much for your time and sharing your insight, Rob. That's fantastic. No, thanks, Adrian. Thanks very much.